So vote between a giant douche and a turd sandwich. It's a pretty shitty choice. It may be how you feel in the elections, specifically the presidential elections, but that's because it's false choice. And that's what this episode really is a commentary on. It satirizes the 2004 election and the two-party system as basically being what's called false choice. It's a commentary on that. And this is this. You're presented with, like, limited alternatives. Like, what is the difference between a giant douche and a turd sandwich? You know, you don't feel like there's a lot of choice there. You know, maybe if you had a third choice or a fourth choice, you know, they'd be different. But basically what we have with the electoral college system is we have the Democratic Party and the Republican Party that control the debates, okay? You don't have no third party in there, no Libertarian, no Green Party, no one else is on the debates, no other candidates for the presidential elections, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, so you're, pre you're presented with these two alternatives that are very limited. Now, you may be like, well, there's a great deal of difference between Joe Biden and, and Donald Trump. Yeah. But it's still a douche and a fucking turd. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the reality of it, right? It's like, cool, we don't get a turd sandwich, but... We have a giant douche as president. It's, it's hard. It, you know, it's hard to feel good about that. You know, and that's part of what false choice is. And, you know, your options are undesirable. Right? Like, personally, personally, I ain't very happy with my choice in 2020. It's some bullshit. I don't feel good about it. It's a douche and a turd. Like, how can you feel good about that? And I think the other thing what false choice is is that you have, you know, two extremes, maybe. And I think that's where the libertarian sort of critique kind of comes in there. It's like there could maybe be another choice. Now, I don't really see Donald Trump and Joe Biden as extremes. Maybe, maybe, maybe you do. Extremely different. Um, but there are some extreme differences in terms of who they represent, how they represent, etc. cetera. Um, and the things that they say and how they say them. Uh, their attitudes, etc. But, you know, um, false choice says that, you know, there may be another option. There could be another option. But we, we the people, you know, we've allowed, we've allowed it to stay like this. We allow every year we bitch about electoral colleges. We bitch about it. We, we bitch about elections. But what the fuck do we do? So what I love about this episode is the carnivalesque. It is like one of the most um, grotesque, scatological, carnival, you know, episodes ever. Um, I think, number one, let's just look at our choices. A giant douche and a turd sandwich. When we talk about lower body stratum, right, there we go. A douche and a turd. You know, so really the carnival is on the, those, those figures and it is to undermine their authority as, as our, as our leaders. PETA gets like the super carnivalesque party. They, I mean, they get roasted that, you know, they, they hate people, but they really love animals. They question how much Stan loves animals. Um, um, you know, it also puts on carnival, like the, the, the discourse that we hear about voting, the importance of voting. You need to vote from our families, from the media, from faculty, etc. I'm not denying that it's not important, but they put that on in the carnival tip here. They undermine that authority, um, you know, that authoritative voice or voices of, 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 of voting. They rip into and subject um, celebrity punditry. You know, here we have mostly left-leaning celebrities you know, as political authorities, authorities on voting, in this case, uh, Puff Daddy, right? And the voter die, motherfucker, voter die, you know. What makes him a credible authority on democracy and voting, right? Nothing, you know. Um, you know, 
subjected to the carnival. Um, you know, it's also an attack at like how we think about voting. And again, you must vote. It's your right. You know, it's 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 it, it, it's a privilege. You know, uh, people died for you to be able to vote. That type of thing that that you hear um, is is just part of what's here. And you know, everybody's getting the grotesque. You know, PETA. Um, uh, Republicans, Democrats, you know, um, and it brings up the question, is the episode liberal or conservative? Who does it rip into? In a lot of ways, it rips into everybody, but, you know, PETA, which is a le typically associated with the left, gets, gets hammered, and, you know, PETA doesn't really get a lot of critique. Uh, it's one of those groups that doesn't get a lot of critique, you know, and they are quite extreme, you know, and again, what we have in South Park is not necessarily liberal or conservative, but a critique on extremist viewpoints. Um, so they get into, you know, vote or die, which is uh, part of citizen change in this campaign uh, from that time where, you know, it was, it, was, it was Puff Daddy and all these other celebrities. So we have, um, we have uh, uh, Paris Hilton, 50 Cent, um, who the fuck else? I can't even, I can't even see. Um, I don't even actually know. Uh, I think Mary J. Blige, and I don't know who's in the middle. I don't know. A bunch of fucking celebrities, right? Who were advocating for people, number one, to vote, vote, vote Democratic as well. So why would like South Park go after these celebrities? And it's plain and simple. Like, what makes these celebrities, these actors, these rappers, whatever, political authorities, right? Um, you know, authoritative in any sort of matter. And that's one of the reasons why they subject celebrities to the carnival in South Park is to undermine their authority in all sorts of matters, okay? But yeah, they go into PETA and critique PETA for its extremist viewpoints and maybe like its paradoxical um, view, viewpoints in the sense of like, you love animals so much, but you you hate humans, you know, like you love them so much that you, you don't love humans or you don't like humans. That's kind of like the critique they're trying to, trying to make, make here that they don't act, advocate for human rights necessarily, just the rights of, um, you know, animals. Um, they really love, uh, animals, which is, you know, it's pretty funny. Okay. So we'll take a chill here, but just think about that stuff. Like how, you know, how, how does subjecting everybody to the, to the carnival -esque, to lower body, uh, stratum humor uh, to the grotesque, you know, how does it undermine their authority and how do they challenge the system? How does South Park, you know, how are they libertarian in the sense of sitting in the middle laughing at everyone and advocating for freedom of choice, whether that choice is to vote for a giant douche or a turd sandwich or to fucking go live with PETA or to not vote at all. I mean, obviously at the end, Stan finds out that his vote doesn't mean shit. They make this huge deal. You need to vote. You need to vote. Your vote matters. Your vote counts. And then he finds out at the end that his choice lost in a landslide. Okay. Anyways, we'll talk a little bit more about politi political philosophy and democracy um, and, and voting and all that stuff as we move into the second bits of this. So take a break. Take a walk. Take a smoke. Take a nap. Do a backflip eat a sandwich, talk with your moms, talk with your roommates, uh, whatever, take a chill, um, and we'll be back in a few minutes as we move along in this fun day here in Sydney 399, South Park and Society. <laughs> 